So this is Mr. John Bachman, electrical engineer from Anatech Corporation, who is going to show us how hydraulic theory works and how it relates to how electrical current and... Uh... Yeah, the problem people have, a lot of people have, in understanding electronics is you can't see it. You have to try to visualize what it is, and that can be hard to, hard to do. But one way I've come up with to help people visualize how electronics and electricity works is to use water. Water follows the same rules as electrons and electron flow. And here with this setup here, we can simulate an electronic circuit using nothing but colored water. I chose electric blue, seemed to be an appropriate color for it. We have here power source. Okay, in electronic terms, that would be a voltage, a source of some sort, a battery or a power supply, or whatever. That feeds through the circuit. There's a pressure meter. This is measuring hydraulic pressure from the water. And as a matter of fact, if I increase the height of the water, you can see the pressure goes up. That's very comparable to electrical pressure, which we call voltage. Voltage is just electrical pressure. So that gauge, we'll keep an eye on that gauge as we go through this to see what the voltage is doing or what the hydraulic pressure is doing, same thing. Now this rather complicated looking set of tubing represents a circuit. If you look, the supply comes here, it goes two different directions, and it splits up here again. Straight ahead we hit a valve, which is comparable to an electrical switch. We have this large tube. A large tube allows a large current flow. In this case, water current, not electrical current, but it's the same thing. Large tube, low resistance, large current. In the upper section, we've got some smaller tubes. They present more resistance to the flow. Higher resistance, less flow. It's the same with electricity. And through this set of valves, I've set it up so we can operate each one individually, or we can operate them in parallel, just like an electrical circuit, or we can even do some in series like an electrical circuit. Further down the line, all of those flows come together here and go through this flow meter. Now this flow meter is just a valve in there that, that rolls around and the speed it rolls around is determined by how much water is going through it. And it puts out pulses. Those pulses are converted by this box to voltages that light up these lights. These are LED lights, low, medium, and high flow from that, that uh, flow meter. And then the water dumps into this bucket and we use it again. So that's the hydraulic circuit that you can use to visualize how an electric circuit works. Let's try it out, huh? I've got some water in my power supply. I've got a little bit of pressure here. I'm going to turn on this valve to allow flow through the large tube. And let's see what happens. Well, sure enough, we get a pretty good flow in the current. And if you look at the little box, all the lights are lit. It says we have a lot of current. OK, I'm going to recharge now. OK. Now let's do a flow through one of the smaller tubes. I'll pick this middle one here that provides more resistance so we don't get as much flow. And there it goes, and you can see we've got a smaller flow here, and we've got only one light lit. That's a low flow. If we throw another path in parallel with that flow, now it's going through both of them. We've got bigger flow, and we've got two lights lit. That's exactly the way an electrical circuit works. Now let's take a look at what happens when the voltage gets higher. In this case, Brandon is going to raise our supply source up. And notice the pressure gauge goes up. That is analogous to the electrical voltage going up. And with just one line open, we now have a considerably higher flow than we had before. Now we've got two lights lit. If you remember when that was down low, drop it down low again, Brandon, if you would, please. 
and it goes down to one light lit because the flow is reduced. That's what voltage does. This all relates to Ohm's law. Now I planned on having a visitor today, but he hasn't arrived yet. He was going to explain to us what Ohm's law is. Hopefully he'll show up. So I was expecting a visitor to help us. Maybe that's it. Let's see who's here. Hello. Hello. I am Jorg. I am Jorg Ohm. Jorg, professor. That's what's right. Fun fact. Thank you for joining us. Did you know my name? It is spelled G-E-O-R-G. -E the E fell off. Anyway. I, uh, I have a fascinating interest in electricity. You see, I wanted to create a way in which people could understand how electricity works or the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Ah, very nice. That is correct. So what I have done is I have created the triangle. It is much like the food pyramid that you Americans have created for no reason. And it looks like this. Now, this is where your sugars and fats would be, and your vegetables would be down here. But that is not the case in this experiment, or whatever it is. So, on the top, we have volts. On the bottom, we have amperes. And my favorite, resistance. What, what year do they use to measure resistance, Professor? Ah, that is right. Now, and if you want to figure out what the resistance is for the ohms of a circuit, what you must do is cover the ohm, and then you must divide E by I, so volts times amps. No, divided by amps. And it if is, you is the resistance? Yes. That is right. Very now, nice. if I want to figure out what the voltage of the circuit is, I must cover up the E and then multiply the amps times resistance. Very simple. Very nice. Now, what if, why don't you tell me, Mr. Scientist Man, what I do if I want to figure out what the amperes is? Ah, I think maybe what you do is you cover the amperes, the I, which leaves you voltage E over the R. So you take voltage and divide it by resistance and you get amperes. Now is that I, correct, that, Professor? That, that is correct. Now what uh, I want you to do is stand 20 feet back and tell me what this is. What <laughs> this is? <laughs> the E or the wiggle in the line? Too late you already know. <laughs> So now you understand my law and how it works. Now I must be going as I have died 169 years ago. <laughs> Th thank you very much, Professor. Uh, we appreciate you coming back from the dead to explain your law to us. Thank you and have a nice day. <laughs> and now John is going to show us how the hydraulic circuit relates to a real electronic circuit. John? Thank you, Brandon. Here I've constructed a simple electronic circuit that is directly analogous to the hydraulic circuit that we looked at using the water. We have our power source over here with a positive voltage here and a ground or return here. That goes off to three resistors through these switches just like we had the resistance tubes and the valves in the hydraulic circuit. Down here I have a switch and a 100 ohm resistor. And this is a switch and a 1000 ohm resistor. And here a switch and a 2000 ohm resistor. Now let's, let's apply Professor Ohm's law and predict what's going to happen here. Oh, also at, on the outside all the currents come together and they go through this voltage meter which is and they go through this ammeter, which is this meter over here, and we'll see the needle, needle deflect when we turn the circuits on. But first, let's predict, using Professor Ohm's law, what the current's going to be when I put this switch on here, putting the 100 ohm resistor in the circuit, and sending that current through the ammeter. If we use the Professor's law, E equals IR, 
we're going to be solving for i, so we cover it up. i is e over r. i equals e over r. And I'm applying 10 volts, which you can see from this meter here. 10 divided by 100 ohms, which is 0.1 amperes. Or that's equivalent to 100 milliamperes. One milliampere equals 0 0.001 amperes. So we have 100 of those. That's 100 milliamps. Let's see what happens. That's what Professor Ohm's law predicts. Turn the switch on. The meter deflects. It actually is a little bit shy of the 100 milliamp scale. And the reason for that is these resistors are not exact. They have a tolerance. This particular resistor has a tolerance of 5%. And that means its value can be within 5% of 100 ohms. It could be as low as 95 ohms. It could be as high as 105 ohms and still be within tolerance, within its specification. This particular one seems to be about 105 ohms, which gave us a little less current. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, what happens if we turn on another one of these resistor circuits? Watch the meter, and I'll turn this one on. Sure enough, just like in the water circuit, we got more flow, we got a higher current. We're up to about oh, 106 milliamps. And if I turn the final one on, it goes up even further, and we're up to about 110 milliamps with all three of those resistors in the circuit. Ohm's law works. That's how electrical circuits work. That's what happens in a resistor network circuit. Okay, John is now going to tell us about reading color codes on resistors, what they mean, and uh, how they affect your daily life. John? Thank you, Brandon. Well, if you look at any of these resistors, you see they've got a, several bands of colors. Those colors tell you the value of the resistor and uh, the uh, tolerance of it. And to read them, I've drawn my version of that resistor up here. It's got a red stripe, a black stripe, a red stripe, and then further down the other end, a gold stripe. First stripe you see is the first digit of the value. Second stripe is the second digit. And the third stripe tells you how many zeros to put after that. Here's the code to the colors. Black is zero, brown is one, red is two, orange is three, yellow is four, green is five, blue is six, purple or violet is seven, gray is eight, and white is nine. So we have red, the first digit, is two. Black is the second digit, zero. And then another red, which is two, and remember that tells you how many zeros to add. 2,000 ohms. The tolerance codes are brown is a 1% resistor, gold is a 5% resistor, and silver is a 10% resistor. So this has a, that resistor has a gold stripe, it's a 5% resistor. Now how the heck do you remember this? Well there's been various little ditties that have come up over the years. The one that I learned many years ago is no longer socially acceptable, so I can't use it anymore. And I came up with one of my own that goes like this. Big boys reject our youthful gags, but Violet gets worried. Another one is common. 
is bad beer rocks our young guts, but vodka goes well. So you can pick your ditty or make up your own ditty, or even look it back into the archives and come up with a ditty that I remember. Just don't repeat it to anybody, especially in Nick's company, and you'll be fine. And that way you can remember the color code and you can re read the resistors. Now why the heck do we want to learn about resistors anyway? What does that have to do with the real world? Well, it turns out all electrical circuits use resistors. Let's consider the little light box that we used when we were looking at the water flow. This flow meter puts out a set of pulses. And the frequency of those pulses is determined by how much water is going through it. Or liquid. It can be any liquid, actually. The more liquid, the higher the frequency. So this little box converts frequency to voltage to light the LEDs. And let's take a look at what's inside. There. If we look in this box, you see we've got several integrated circuits. Incidentally, this, this is old technology way of doing this particular function, converting voltage to a D, or converting frequency to a DC voltage. But you see resistors all over the place in here. There's a couple tucked back in there. They're in there doing different functions, but they're all doing the same thing. What does a resistor do? It resists current flow. The value of the resistor determines how much it resists that current flow. And we use it in circuits to perform that function, and it's used in this circuit too. Now sometime in the future, we might uh, consider doing the same circuit using a more modern device, a microcontroller. We can replace almost all of these components with one microcontroller, and that might be the subject of a future video. And while we're here, we can look at these funny looking components. These are capacitors. And these capacitors, here's another one of a different type and another one of that same type. Emerald focus. These capacitors, again, perform different functions. You can also see there's some other components in this circuit. These guys here, these stand-up cans that are blue, those are capacitors. And it, this is a different kind of capacitor, and that's another capacitor. And in this circuit, they're performing you know, three or four different functions, all with the same type of component, but different values. Uh, and we can talk sometime about what a capacitor is and what does it do. Uh, why do we have a string of them up here, and why are they scattered around the circuit? They're doing different functions, and we can talk about that. That could be another subject of another, another video. Testing, one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. Good. It's good. Yeah. So this is Mr. John Bachman. He is going to discuss... Oh, we're starting the thing now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we don't go. Good. Okay. Where am I? I have no idea. In which it allows you to determine or explain your relationship between both. <laughs> anyway. Yes, the, the voltage and the current and the resistance. <laughs> that is correct, and I make the triangle like so. Now there is an E. And that is representative of the vote. Excuse me, Professor, but I think you got your triangle upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it is my law. <laughs> I wrote the law. Shut the hell up. <laughs>